Yo, what's going on, Surfer Squad? Tanner here. I got a really special one for you today. As most of you know, I've been into the hobbies that I portray on this channel since roughly around the age of six. Over the lifetime of my hobby, I've made countless enclosures, and many of those you've seen on this channel. From frogs to fish and just about everything in between, I probably dabbled in it at one point or another. And over the 22 plus years that I've been doing these things, this hobby's been an absolute blessing in my life, and I can't see it any other way. From the beginning, aquariums have always captivated me. Growing up we had a few, but success was never great. I always wanted one though because of an epic tank at the pediatrician's office. Some of my earliest memories are of that tank. I vividly remember a beautiful planted tank full of java ferns and inhabited by Bozmani rainbow fish and clown loaches. The truth is, I actually liked going there simply to watch the fish. And to this day, I'm just as easily captivated by this hobby. Sit me down in front of just about any tank and I'll be content. I honestly believe that having an aquarium or something of the sort is one of the most enriching hobbies possible for people of all ages. That's why I continually go to great lengths to explain what I'm doing in these videos. I know it's not always the most popular format, but I don't want there to be any question about how I build these things. I also try my best not to perpetuate the stigma that this is an expensive and unattainable hobby. Sure, you can spend a lot of money on this stuff, and in some cases I have, but the majority of things I've shown on this channel are budget conscious and easily repeatable with the right information. While in this hobby, I've crossed paths with and befriended a number of interesting characters. To name a few, there's Jay Wilson, Kenan Harkin, Rachel O'Leary, Ed Ballou, Greg Whitstock, and Weston Zimmerman. I want to focus on Weston, who's a certified Aquascape contractor that I met through Greg. Last summer, Aquascape and Tussie Landscaping helped me build a pond in my front yard, which is where the journey begins. It turns out that Weston and I are kindred spirits. We both enjoy water features, build our own PCs, enjoy cinematography, and get this, we both love moss. Needless to say, we've kept in touch to this day, and I consider him to be a good friend. A few years back, he had the opportunity to explore the Amazon River and tributaries in Colombia. While there, he saw cardinal tetras and other fish in their natural environment. This experience captivated him so much that he wanted to bring the river home in the form of an aquarium. Despite the fact that he builds ponds for a living, he didn't know much about aquariums when we met. This is where I come in. It didn't take long for him to tell me about the things I just described and his dream to one day have an Amazon-inspired aquarium of his own. Without hesitation, I told him we would make it happen. That was about 16 months ago. Eventually the window opened, and in late July we made it happen. To my excitement, he got a 150 gallon aquarium from a local fish store. Although bigger tanks are more expensive, this is a great option for a new hobbyist. It's a lot easier to have consistent conditions in a larger setup, which means a greater chance of success. One of the first things I did was drill the tank for bulkheads. He wanted a clean look with minimal equipment showing. No doubt this is the way to go. I also blacked out the sides with window tint film. This will be an in-wall tank, so doing this will hide off the plumbing components. Before I showed up, Weston cut a hole in the wall and built a stand out of 2x4s. We set the tank on this stand after the previous steps. I installed the bulkheads and went on to scape the tank. As with other tanks that include a lot of hardscape, I first put down pieces of a crate light diffuser. The scape will consist of 200 plus pounds of hardscape alone, and this will evenly distribute that weight. Before adding those items, I'll add the planting substrates. Per usual, I used a mix of Seachem Fluorite Dark and Fluval Stratum. I rinsed them off and added it to the tank. I'll cap this off with red flint sand, which has a larger grain and nice coloration. It will also complement the hardscape, which consists of tan elephant skin stone and weathered driftwood. While scaping, I wanted to make a composition that could be viewed from the front and the back. I wanted to fill the tank while also leaving room for plants and fish. All of the spaces will create a lot of territories for the fish once it's planted. I foamed everything in place with black expanding foam and covered it with sand to secure the hardscape. 
I didn't want the pieces to float away. This will also make the skate more rigid, which makes maintenance easier. Here's what I ended up with. Let's add the plants. We got a great assortment of awesome plants from Dustin's fish tanks. I chose primarily low light plants, so this is easy to care for and because it will be dimly lit once the plants grow in. I arranged the plants in a way that I felt would best serve the fish and to create good coverage. After all of that I could finally fill the tank. I also added various botanicals to naturalize and finish the look. That meant we could finally add the first round of fish. I should mention that prior to this we dosed the tank with bacteria but I forgot to film it. Anyway we initially stocked it with 5 bristlenose plecos, 9 amano shrimp, and a few handfuls of various nerite snails. That was back in July and the last time I saw the tank in person. Since then, I know the plants melted back from acclimation, the fish have grown, and Weston added a new group of fish in September. 12 Peruvian Autumn Angelfish. I hadn't seen much of this in person and I wasn't maintaining the tank. I didn't know what to expect almost 6 months later for my return visit. Here's how it looks as of early December. I was ecstatic to see how much it has grown in and how it looks now. It's very close to how I imagined it should when I set it up. Also all of the fish I added at least doubled in size. My favorite part of the tank is how the lilies and valisneria cover the top. It creates awesome coverage that shades the tank. It looks incredible from a low angle as well. Although the tank looks great, I will tidy things up a bit. I also brought more plants, 14 cardinal tetras, and 6 peppered corydoras. I let the fish float acclimate while I trimmed the plants and added the new ones. Before I show more on the tank's progress, I wanted to show you how Weston set up the stand. He framed in the front with some reclaimed barnwood which looks incredible. He used the same barnwood on the opposite side and covered the other areas with reclaimed tin. I think it creates a really unique look. The canopy flips up and gives you access to the top. He has a single current USA Serene Sun LE Pro LED light over the top of the tank and we use polycarbonate greenhouse panels for lids. Under the tank we have two Whale 500 canister filters that were provided by our friends at Seache. There's also an Oase Oxymax 400 air pump for aeration. Another cool feature is a retractable black curtain on the back which gives you the option to cover the back of the tank. This allows you to appreciate the main viewing side even more. This was a challenging build because of how it's installed on the wall. I had to place an item and check it from the front to see if the placement was good and repeat. I like the end result though. My goal was to create a biotope inspired aquarium. Weston wanted something that resembles the underwater landscapes he saw in Colombia. Let me clarify though, this is not a true biotope setup. Most if not all the plants aren't found in the Amazon. Neither are the hardscape items. However, it's all set up to resemble what you'd see in nature. It's dimly lit, there's botanicals with mom buildup, the water is tinted with tannins, and it's planted somewhat sparsely. Again, this resembles what you'd see in an aquatic environment. This is in contrast to our typical aquascape. Sure, they look nice and are inspired by nature, but they are far from being representative of it. When it came to fish selection though, we tried to keep it as close as possible. Excluding the snails and shrimp, everything can be found in South America. I also tried to keep the setup beginner friendly based on what I've learned over the years. The plants are low tech and the fish selection overall is fairly easy to care for. The botanicals and leaf litter break down and fertilize the plants alongside the fish waste. That means no fertilizer is necessary. 
They also add the necessary acidity and make the desired tint in the water. In other words, everything works in harmony with very little intervention. Based on what Weston's told me, this has been incredibly easy to maintain with virtually no issues at all. Keep in mind that he's had no experience with aquariums before this. The cool thing about this build is that it brings everything full circle. Weston helped make my dream of having a beautiful pond a reality, and I helped fulfill his dream of having an aquarium. It's fun to set up tanks for myself, but I find even more fulfillment in this. Now he and his family spend quality time together watching the aquarium, and are generally enriched by having it in their lives. Being able to extend my experience onto others so they too can be blessed by this hobby is incredible. Again, that's why I put so much care into these videos. And think of this, much like the aquarium that inspired me as a child, the setup and viewing of this tank will likely be some of the earliest memories of Weston's kids. Apparently his son is always retelling about the time I stopped by to install the tank. How cool is that? Nature has a real ability to bring people together. That's only possible a few months out of the year in areas like where I live. Having an aquarium or similar setup allows us to enjoy nature year round. I continue to make friends through this hobby and hope to make many more. Although I only know a few of you personally, it's crazy to think that there's nearly 750,000 like-minded people out there. If you're still on the fence with trying these hobbies, I highly recommend diving in. Make a knowledgeable friend that can jumpstart your hobby, watch some videos, read into it, etc. There's so much more I could say, but I think you get the idea. I really hope you all enjoyed this one. I know I had a fun time doing it, and it's great to be able to give somebody else my art for a change, as opposed to keeping it all for myself. I'd like to do more builds for other people in the future, and I actually have another one planned for the not-so-distant future. A friend of mine has a certain desert-dwelling species that a lot of you have been requesting a build on for years. I don't want to keep on myself, but he has one, so we'll do that really soon. I don't know when, but definitely kind of soon. Anyway, do what you can to help support the video. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. Maybe share it. I don't know. Do whatever you can. Help support the video. Until next time, Surfer Squad, take care and peace.